Welcome to Present Poetry. I'm your host, Erin Crittenden, and all poems within this podcast are either public domain or are used with permission from the author or the author's estate. It's a fun time for poetry lovers of all ages, so sit back, relax, and get ready to hear some poems of the past and the present. This week's featured poet is Eveline Stein. Eveline Stein was born October 12, 1863, in Lafayette, Indiana, where she remained for her entire life. Her father, John Stein, was a lawyer and writer, and he directed Eveline's liberal education to develop her poetic and artistic talents. In 1886, Eveline wrote her first poem and sent it to the Indianapolis Journal for publication. They loved it, and she continued to contribute to the journal and other newspapers for several years. Eveline quickly gathered attention for her mastery of form and use of sentiment, and she eventually sold One Way to the Woods, her first collection of poetry, to Copeland and Day of Boston in 1897. In 1898, she began writing some short stories, which she collected into her second book, Troubadour Tales, and published in 1903. This was merely the beginning of Eveline's writing career, and she ended up publishing 11 volumes of stories, mostly for children, and three books of verse. She also translated two volumes of poetry, one from Japanese and one from Italian, into English. Aside from her illustrious writing career, Eveline was also an accomplished limner and did decorative work for Chicago and New York City societies as an illuminator. Her most notable work is her illumination of Psalm 23, a design that won her a Certificate of Honorable Mention from the Panama Pacific International Exposition of 1915. She also had her work displayed at the John Heron Art Institute, as well as in other metropolitan exhibits. Like her poetry, her artwork was sentimental but true to technique and featured a floral or natural theme. Eveline Stein passed on December 11, 1923, in her Little House of Dreams, and was interred into Lafayette's Greenbush Cemetery. She was 60 years old. Despite being known as a gentle and reclusive person, her poetry and stories created a wide impact on the literary world and granted her a legacy that continues to live on. We are reading from her second book of poetry, Among the Trees Again, which was published in 1902. This poem has no name. I saw a meadow land one day, the grass stood green and high, but not appealed in any way to stay the passerby, till suddenly the sunlight strayed, those leafy tangles threw, and touched to fire on every blade, a golden network grew. A million airy cobwebs gleamed, so silken soft and bright, that all the level lowland seemed a tracery of light. And as I watched the webs, I thought, the field of life along, a sight as these, so I have wrought, with slender threads of song. They bind the grass and blossoms too, the bee and butterfly, and some go faintly wavering through the tender azure sky. Yet still I wait that golden glow, whose fine transmuting art must smite my web of song and so reveal it to the heart. Ah, therefore thou, I pray thee touch these frail threads I have spun, with grace of sympathy for such might light them like the sun. This poem is called The Redbird. Swept lightly by the south wind, the elm leaves softly stirred, and in their pale green clusters there straightway bloomed a bird. His glossy feathers glistened with dyes as richly red as any tulip flaming from out the garden bed. But ah, unlike the tulips in joyous strain, ere long this redbird flower unfolded a heart of golden song. This poem is called Between Seasons. 
The cherry trees are haunted by hordes of robber jays, and warmer winds are fanning the poppies to a blaze. And loosed in fitful flurries, the sweet syringas fall to lie like little snowdrifts against the garden wall. Upon the laden lattice, in softly rounding shapes, a wealth of tiny clusters are growing into grapes. Hi-ho, a drowsy shimmer enfolds the sunny hours, and humming birds are hidden in scarlet trumpet flowers. The tenderness of springtime is almost overpast, but oh, the gracious summer, it comes, it comes at last. This poem is called The Home Fields. The fields are full of sunlight and leafy golden green, and misty purple shadows are flitting in between. The flaky elder flowers are drenched with honeydew, and all the distant woodlands stand veiled in tender blue. Half seen between green thickets of grapevine and wild rose, in twinkling swirls of silver, the lazy river flows while down the grassy roadside the milkweed balls are bright, and waving prince's feather is tipped with snowy white. Ah, ever dearest homeland, tis here my spirit sings, and as my heart caresses the sweet familiar things, such rare midsummer magic distills through all the air, I think these fields are fairer than any anywhere. This poem is called Among the Trees Again. I throb my heart. Is it not sweet to be, to breathe, to bide by growing things once more? We did not guess before how close our life was locked in greenery. Hark how the sparrows in the apple tree are chattering, chirping till their tiny throats are fairly brimmed and quivering through and through with rollick notes. Good morrow, little birds. Good morrow, morrow. Oh, I would, I knew, some light-winged language, kindred singing words, wherein to say, this day, this day, at last, this happy day, I come to be a neighbor unto you. Too long, too long we heard strange footsteps pass, harsh, strident echoes stricken out of stone, but never softened by green growing grass, or mellowed to faint earthly undertone. And then, O oh heart, did we not oft times feel ourselves apart, alone, wrought to vague discord by some touch unknown? Did we not weary with a nameless grief in dreaming of tall clover, daisy sown, or music blown from the wind harping of some little leaf? It was not that within the city's core. There dwelt no sympathies, nor interests keen, no human ties to temper its fatigues. T'was only that we needed something more, some note rang wrong, a foolish fancy, maybe, but still strong. That life sang sweeter, snatched between the green, close-slapping verdure of a fret of twigs. Where all the ground was paven out of sight, and only from a far-off strip of sky, my mother nature strove to speak to me. I could not hearken to her voice aright, I knew not why, but ever to mine ear some whispering tree seemed of the innermost golden soul of her, the best interpreter, and so what wonder, life, that you and I, shut out from such glad confidence, should miss and grieve for this. But all this yearning will forget, for now, within my window, so, by fingertips, I'll draw into mine arms this dancing bough, and stroke its silky buds across my lips. O generous-natured, friendly neighbor tree, weave gentle blessings in the shade and shine, and granting gracious patience to my plea, some simple lesson of your lore make mine, make mine, I pray. Oh, be a kindly teacher unto me, and I'll pour out such worshipful heart wine. Not any bird that sings to you all day, or nestles to low leafy lullaby, shall hold you in such dear observance, nay, nor love you half so tenderly as I. Thank you for listening to this episode of Present Poetry. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review, share us on social media, or subscribe so you never miss an episode. 
If you would like to learn more about the featured poet, or you would like your work featured on the podcast, please check out the links in the show notes. Thank you again for listening, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.